Talked about Lauren Park Lane. Hagens is a transfer. Bembry Baines has been exceptional. Really, when you go back to maybe even the last three games where she's averaging about 22 points, nine rebounds, and Sydney Cooks is right behind Park Lane in terms of points per game averages. So those are the, the starting five for each of these teams. Seton Hall comes in with a 17 and 12 overall record, challenging Villanova Wildcats that are 25 and 5. And as we mentioned, ranked 11th in the country for the first time in program history. And look at both of these teams looking to build momentum headed into the conference tournament. Pulani Spurlock Welsh, Bruce Morris, and Mark Rash are the officials here tonight. Here's Maddie Seagra's first touch being defended by Maya Bembry. Kicks it over a three-point look, not there. For Brooke Mullen's first attempt. And it's always interesting to see how a team is going to defend the nation's leading scorer. Right now, starting with Bembry, more of a swing person inside and out with a little bit of size on Maddie. Yeah, Bembry was the primary defender in that first meeting back on February 11th. And we've talked about how good Azana Baines has been. I mentioned the last three games she's been sensational. Double figures, seven of the last eight. have really found her groove in the starting lineup. Here's Lucy Olsen, the second leading scorer for Villanova. Just a miscommunication. And look at Denise Dillon, her third season as a Villanova head coach. Man, if you're Seton Hall, you're happy with that. You've kept the ball out of Maddie Seeger's hands. The last two possessions, forcing some other players have to beat you from the perimeter. Boy, Lauren Parkland is so good. Seton Hall gets out to a 4-0 advantage. Baines with the bucket, Park Lane with the bucket. Villanova looking for its first bucket. With five to shoot. Seagrass gets triple teams, has to throw it up, draws the foul. Maddie Seagrass would see multiple players, different sizes, different heights, different looks, maybe some man, maybe some zone here tonight. Yeah, and his... Biggest point of emphasis against not just Maddie, but the entire Villanova team was to make them feel uncomfortable. They're a team when they get in a rhythm. Seton Hall also tried to force her left, right? An assist maker in program history, blocked partially by Lucy Olsen. And Nova on the transition out to Burke. And Maddie Burke has her first three-point bait. And that's a sign. Denise Dillon is begging Maddie Burke to take more threes. Her last three games, she had just three points in each of those. So she's already matched that. Can she stay aggressive on her shot taking and making? Yeah, a tough performance for Maddie Burke in the last game Friday against Providence, which is one of seven for three-point territory. And a walking violation. You're going to have those opportunities when you're playing with Maddie Seegers because the defense is going to collapse on her in the middle. We have a few Penn State transfers on this floor from both sides. Hagens is a Penn State transfer as well. And they're cutting Burke. He's got a good start in the last couple possessions. Yeah, and that's something else Denise Dillon has talked to us about. Proclaim quickly whips it over to Baines, who dribbles into that mid-range attempt. And Becker with another offensive rebound. And winning the battle of the glass, something Tony Bazella told us was important for his group, and they've got a couple early ones. High arcing shot for Lauren Park Lane. Tony Bazella felt like with her knocking down those threes, that could be the key for Seton Hall. How about the reverse? Quickness over the 6 4 Cooks, changes hands, changes size. Really pretty finish. Cooks thought about the three. She's actually shooting the three at the, the best percentage of her college career. Cross court pass. A catch and shoot opportunity for Hagens leaves it short. Boy, though, Seton Hall, they don't know the basketball, but Seton Hall, you can see them pursue the offensive boards here early. Yeah, and on that possession, really good defense from Villanova, doubling Sydney Cooks, one in front, one in the back, not allowing her to even get a touch. Seton Hall started, they, they hit their first two shots, but they've been 0 for 5 the last few possessions. Burke has a hot hand. She knocks down her second three-point make. And Cooks tries to size it up. She's been good from back there this year. Yeah, Sydney Cooks, especially of late. How about her last 
seven games, Lisa. She's making about three threes per game and shooting about 60% from behind the arc. That was money. Six, say that again. 6-0. Well, it's 59, but I gave her the roundup. Oh, I love the roundup. Everyone will take the roundup. Here's Mullen cutting into the lane. That one popping out. A good offensive rebound and put back for the first points for Aubrey's. And Tony Bazella stopped by our desk before and said, we have to win the rebounding battle. She's got that double team, forces the double team, and then turns and fires from the post. And a quick five points for her. And I love that outside and then the inside game from her. Definitely capable of doing both, especially in this matchup against a Villanova team that's not too big inside. A transfer that played a year at Mississippi State and a couple of years at Michigan State before finding her way here to Seton Hall. She's one of ten either graduate students or seniors on a very veteran-laden roster. There's Segrist. Maddie Segrist just moves so well without the ball. Those numbers are arguably the best that's ever played at Seton Hall. Turnaround, foul call, count the bucket and the foul for Baines. Final possession here of the quarter. Here's Olsen. Left-handed pass into the corner, knocks it down, Brooke Mullen. Final shot of the quarter. Reverse it, kick it out, and find a better look, but he's he's impressed with how they've responded after those first few couple of minutes. Well, we know that Seton Hall will come with some effort, be a little bit scrappy when they're playing at their best. They had a stretch this season. They won 11 of 12, including seven in a row. Beating some good competition. Here's a look for Mullen, and she's hit her last two shots. Largest lead of the game for Villanova. And that's a tough one because Seton Hall went a zone look there. They wanted to mix some things up throughout this game. They forced Brooke Mullen, who's shooting less than 30% from three on the season. She's not, now knocked down two in a row. Oh, and there's an answer by Higgins. Shaylin Higgins, who shoots 40% from three. Her 32nd three-point make of the season. Olsen over to Dalsey for two. Lucy Olsen, her creation, her playmaking ability. Park Lane right into the traffic. And Lauren Park Lane's going to have to adjust a little bit, whether she's pulling up quicker, maybe at that Big East logo, or she's jump-stopping and finding a teammate that's open because she's drawing a double. So she'll take a seat. And remember, she missed the last game against Butler because of an illness. That's significant. She doesn't miss many games. I think maybe around three total in her career. When she plays, she starts every single game, 116 and 116. Dowsey for another two. Dowsey, a player with such a high ceiling, Played just five minutes per game last year as a freshman. Now is starting. Baines gives a post touch to Cooks, who turns and fires. Nine point edge now for Nova. Largest lead has been 11 at one point. And a cross court pass there to Runyon. Over to Burke. Seven seconds now to shoot from the wing. Burke is red hot tonight. I was just thinking, we haven't seen many touches from Maddie Segris in this game. And she can score bunches, too. Off the glass for Higgins. Another offensive rebound for Seton Hall. Make it seven so far in the game. How about that athletic move by Baines? Baines now with seven to match Cook's seven. Those are the leading scores on the Seton Hall side. Dowsey against Cooks and draws a foul against Sydney Cooks. She thought it was clean. That's her first. And Villanova would share the title with UConn. And significant for all kinds of reasons. Savior, that would be their first win in Big E's play. I'm saying that would be the shocker of the season if the Musketeers could pull that off at UConn as well. Lane. Nearly getting wrapped up. There was a double team. Thomas Sasson was open and it was Baines. Yeah, a better read there from Park Lane. Drawing the double team. She's four of nine from the field. Baines has nine points. I mentioned double figures coming into tonight. Seven of the last eight games. Double team again against Segrist, who turns and fires. She leaves it short. Maddie Segrist now shooting one for three from the field. 
about from the other side. Segris will take a trip to the foul line. Female coaches, female officials, female production crew. Really a special night. Ten-point advantage for a Villanova team when the nation's leading scorer has that stat line. And your second leading scorer, by the way, Lucy Olsen, has two fouls on the bench. So not the most ideal situation for the Wildcats, but they'll take it when they're up by double digits in that scenario. And speaking of double digits, Baines in double figures now with 11. Yeah, so impressed with how aggressive she's been in finding gaps in the defense. She's found success from the free throw line. Seamers actually goes down, trying to fight through a couple defenders. And Dowsey with another bucket. She's got eight points. Dowsey with a funny reaction there. I think she was impressed with herself on that little turnaround. Perfect three for three. Look at her numbers. Eight points, six rebounds. Big foul call. You could see uh, Villanova understanding that and celebrating after they drew the offensive foul on Cooks. And that's the second time that Segris has tried to kind of fight through that screen. Makes good on the first free throw. They get six for six. So six of her eight points coming from the charity strike. She will find a way. She scored at least 20 points in every single game of the season this year. Absurd. Only one player in the last 20 years has done it more. Kelsey Plum. 35 games. Maddie's the 30. Cooks with the turnaround. Villanova trying to piece things together here in the first half. Again, their starting point guard, Lucy Olsen, out with the two fouls. Here is Jones, gives it up, and the left-hander falls for Olbrey's. And this is the largest lead of the game here for Nova. Park Lane, that hesitation, pulls just inside the lane. The final shot of the first half. Low shooting attempts and, and points to stay as low as we've seen. But I mean, she's a player that doesn't care because her team has a 15 point lead. She wants to win. And Seton Hall is going to have to get their offense going. Just 31% shooting for the Pirates in the opening 20. Yeah, and so they give a post touch to who has been the hottest hand. It's Baines with the 11 points. Azana Baines with the 11 points in the first half, and she gets the opening touch here for Seton Hall. And they're still looking for their star to get going. Lauren Park Lane with the ball right there. Averages 20. Had a really tough shooting first half. One of 11 for just two points. And she walked with it. And I think for Park Lane, this half is about adjusting. You've seen how disciplined Villanova is on help defense and contesting shots without fouling. So she's not going to be able to get deep into the paint and try and throw up shots. She's going to have to pull up a little bit farther out. Seagrass first attempt of the second half. And chasing it down. Good hustle by Mullen. Olsen. Feeding Dalsey. On the post. Goes right at Cooks for two. And Dalsey may be giving up an inch or two in the matchup, but has the speed and uses that speed to make a move and get to the opposite side of the rim. So Villanova getting double figures here tonight from Dalsey and from Burke. And Baines keeps adding to her tally. She's got 13 on 6 of 12 shooting. But Kim, I mean, just stressing the importance of Villanova finding different ways to develop a double-digit advantage here tonight. Segris with the ball right now. You know, just with eight points. I say just because you can when you're talking about Maddie Segris and Lucy Olsen. Who had to sit most of the second quarter with foul trouble. Mullen from the wing. And that's a player they found offense from tonight, Brooke Mullen. Averages just three points on the season. She's up to eight. Yeah, so you got your top two scorers here from Nova that aren't your top two scorers here tonight. So most of the scoring for Seton Hall. Baines with the 13, Cooks with the nine. This is the scoring done by those two players. Here's 10 to shoot for Olsen. Trying to fight her way. She throws it up and draws the foul. 
Not too much contact there. She kind of fell away from it, but was able to get the lower body contact. And Mullen applying a, a little bit of pressure here to Park Lane. Make her think about it a little bit, bringing it up. Into the front court, Park Lane trying to foul against Mullen, her first. She had said, you know, that she's small in stature but big in heart and, and talked about how much this university, she's got the decision to make on if she wants to come back or not. Seton Hall's all-time leading score. Stops and assists in that category as well. And she had already mentioned in the future wanting to come back here and coach. That's a sign of really loving where you're at. Jab step there for Seagrass, and the first three-pointer falls for her, and she was smiling from ear to ear after that one drops. Yeah, you can't keep Maddie Seagrass down for long. That may get her a little confidence, a little rhythm. That was pure. Pass deflected initially by Mullen. Seton Hall still retains. Benbury flips it up and in. Benbury's first points tonight. Into the hands here of Olsen. Change of speed, and Olsen has another bucket. It's her second of the night. I've been so impressed with watching how her package, she is so sharp in her attacks. And she's so tough, too. Olsen with the block, and Tulsi was there, too. Both of them challenging that attempt. Seagrass goes baseline. And now Villanova has found its wildcat rhythm. Tournament resume. I mean, the 25 and 5 is just insane in Denise Dillon's third year. That net ranking as a 12, and, and we mentioned off the top, they are currently in that projected top 16 overall seed, which would mean they would host a first round game and a second round game if they were to advance. I love when you asked Denise Dillon about exactly that. She talked about senior night on Friday against Providence. Seagrass goes baseline and, and knocks it down. And what'd she tell her team? Well, because we didn't know, you know, there's nothing to really play for in terms of a big East team. Crossover for right. Ooh, that's a tough shot on the left side. Amari Wright. Yeah, well contested, but Amari Wright using the body, laying that shot up nice and high on the glass, getting the friendly bounce. Seagrass, jab step, pulls it back, fires and hits. She's got 17. And that jab step, Lisa, is so efficient for her. It's so direct. She gets the defender to step back to create that little bit of space she needs. And those other two players, she's basically, her averages are for three quarters. Yeah, it is really interesting because of the rotations Dawn Staley goes with. I believe Aaliyah averaging about 13 per game. So it depends on, on what you like in terms of what's important to you. Because she picked up two personals. A lot of that second quarter, she sat out. Villanova navigated through that time. We'll see how they navigate through this time now with Olsen back on the bench. Dribbles with the pull-up. Offensive rebound by Olbreeze. Out to Jones. Blocked. Seagrass then gets fouled. She attacks it. She draws the fouls. And we've talked to a lot of opposing coaches. That's where she gets putbacks and end ones and she's very good from the free throw line. You know, everyone talks about her scoring. Her rebounding is really underestimated, maybe undervalued by people outside of the Villanova campus. Jordan for three. So Chayla Jordan has inserted her into this game. And got a little bit of the defensive duties on the defensive side. Drills that three-point shot, her first points of the night. And what you were saying about Maddie, it's, all, it's like an afterthought that she has over 1,000 career rebounds. Second all-time at Villanova. Count the bucket and the foul. And I told you about my conversation with her a couple years ago where she's got a short-term memory if she has a slow quarter, an off first half. It's almost like that one for three first half didn't even happen. She is now up to 22 points. She's done it every game this season, 20 or more. Runner leaves it short. Jordan's going to take it again. Same spot, not the same result that time. Trying to chase it down his base. 62 to 35. Going over one to first meeting February 11th. They put up 99 points against Seton Hall. 
Seagrass, another offensive rebound and put back. Sneaking around and getting those offensive rebounds. 16 in the corner, 22 for the game, but back the other way. Baines and Seagrass will check out. Many times, many seconds has she sat out. Maddie Seagrass with the 24 points. As you mentioned, now she's gotten to 20 or more every single game of the season here so far. She has basically almost played the entire game. 29 minutes here so far before she gets this breather. Yeah, now 31 games of 20 or more. We mentioned earlier, only Kelsey Plum has done that more in the last 20 years. She's done it for 35 games, every game of her senior year. Jones. Dowsey. Draws a contact. And two free throws here coming. So aggressive on the boards, blocking shots, but having a tough time finishing. But today she looks more controlled. Check it on the foul. It's actually Cook's third. So no foul on Bain. So that's big with Sydney Cooks playing with three personals. For Seton Hall, nine points here for Cooks tonight offensively. Bedford. Bounce pass there to Bain's. She has been at the end of the regular season for Seton Hall. Yeah, the scoreboard, tough to look at for Seton Hall right now, but Baines has been a bright spot. She has been unstoppable in her attacks. The slow start to the season, you know, she had a stress fracture from October to November. Jones gets her first bucket. And Tony Pazella talking to us. Zana Baines, you know, when, when you have a stress fracture, not a whole lot that you can do. You just got to wait it out. And she has found her rhythm. Again, as we have talked about, she's got the ball right now towards the tail end of January, heading into the conference tournament postseason. Blocked! Dorsey has another, and that's how it ends. You could say Joe Tartamella. I think it's going to be a split vote. There's a lot of choices. Oh, wow, threading the needle. Dowsey, though, couldn't get it to fall. She's got her fourth double-double, though, tonight. Along with her two blocks, 11 points and 10 rebounds. Victoria Keenan has checked in, number 23, for the first time tonight for Seton Hall. I mentioned you see the pink jerseys. Obviously, the pink game here for Seton Hall tonight. Already had their senior day. Goes baseline. Pembry's got four points. Burke walking, working off the screen. Dowsey rolls off. And a good take from Page. So some, some pretty good company. So your this year. Player of the Year, Conference Player of the Year, doing some things that has uh, barely been done only one other time in, in Villanova basketball history. And that picture told me that jerseys have come a long way. <laughs> so has color and black and white photos as well. The Coach of the Year, was that the hardest pick for you to make? That was. I, I had to consult with a few people and be like, what are you, what are you guys thinking? I mean, I think you... Denise got it last. But St. John's has been a bit of a surprise. Best start in program history. They were undefeated there for a while. And noteworthy, because as we've mentioned, if UConn can win that, they win the outright title tonight. Wrapped up a share on Saturday with a win against DePaul in Chicago. Busy night, too, of Big East women's basketball. Ten teams, ten of the eleven playing tonight. Another bucket. Here for the Wildcats. They put up 70 points, 72 points here so far. Maddie Segrist with those 26, right about at her average. She gets just shy, oh, so shy of 29 points per game at 28.8. Well, Seton Hall, can we were looking at the numbers. Their best stretch of the season, I mentioned it, 11 of the last 12. They had won seven straight at the end of November. They beat Marquette, which was ranked at the time. Only loss during that stretch was to UConn. Yeah. And then they fell into a rough patch of things. Yeah, it's been a, a little bit of a roller coaster season, and I, I think it, it points to the defense. And we talked to Lauren Park Lane today, as we mentioned, a great conversation, and she too felt that way that during that stretch where they won 11 of 12, the defensive intensity 
was there. The execution, as we look at these numbers a little bit, you see opponents both shooting and scoring at much higher rates, and Villanova's been able to shoot about 50% today as Segris continues to go, and, and that's just something you hope to bring to Mohegan, is to bring that defensive intensity back. Lauren said our defense was on a whole nother level. You're number three here for Denise Dillon. She said, you know what, they, they like, they broke it down into segments. Uh, you see the coaches do this and coming into tonight trying to finish strong in that second segment. Back to the NCAA tournament and now they're going to rely on that growth. Baines rips it away and takes it all the way in for two. And that when she started in the second time, January 31st. Yeah, I was at that game. It was at St. John's. Seton Hall had lost a couple tough ones in a row, and Tony felt he needed a spark. He needed some size and athleticism, and she has been fantastic for them. Segris going to get the pass. Look at the triple team. And you see that against bigger players there because she keeps the ball so high, and that's why even against a player like 6'4", Sydney Cooks, she's able to get her on the arm. It's all the records in school history, Big East scoring history. The 13th game this year with 30 or more points now for Maddie Segrist. I've seen a couple of these now, and it almost seems quiet. Like, quietly getting to 30 time and time again, Maddie Segrist. So simple, so fundamental, nothing too flashy. Let's not forget she had eight points at halftime. They can't get it. Segrist bringing it across the timeline. Inside four minutes left to play. Going to more. Maddie Segrist. Oh, my. 32. I think we have to keep reminding ourselves that we are watching a legend. 10 of 16 from the field here for Segrist. A triple try. Hit the top of the backboard. So it'll be Villanova basketball. Three subs coming in now for the Wildcats. And they will sub out Maddie Segrist, Lucy Olsen, and Brooke Mullen. And so likely that will be the end of Maddie Segrist's night. Ending it with 32 points, 10 of 16 shooting from the field. A perfect 11 for 11 from the free throw line. And that's just it. And I think this is a great game for Maddie because her last three games, starting with that UConn game that you were at, her efficiency hadn't quite been there. She'd been a little frustrated. Tonight she didn't get many touches or attempts in the first half, but she bounced back in the second and finished with such efficiency. It's been a quiet night for Park Lane. Just three points for Seton Hall's leading scorer here tonight. Tony Pizzella and the Pirates will now have to turn the page to the Big East Conference Tournament. Xavier still trailing by 14 to UConn here tonight. Runyon draws the foul. Bring more to the table offensively. They know she's going to come in, play hard, take charges, disrupt defensively. Nani Lee Colley getting her first minutes here tonight. And Park Lane. Yeah, I feel for her. We know she's capable of so much more. I thought Villanova really defended her well in help defense in that first half when she got into the lane. Quick hands by Pinkney. He takes it all the way. Tony Brazella has always liked Shaylin Pinkney's energy. One of the reasons why she started 16 times this year. Jones on the right side. Takes the contact. Bonnie Bucket and one. First, Villanova will improve to 26 and 5, 17 and 3 overall as the number two seed in the Big East tournament. Three falls for Keenan. This will be win 17 in their last 19 games. Those two losses to UConn. That's it. Jones will dribble it out. So Villanova going on the road. And on the road, they have been so good, improving to 13 and 1 in away games here this year. 
It's a final. 83 to 56.